John Long Silver Rails here. This is a follow-up to the previous GG1 vlog. Here I have a GG1 that I obtained in trade because it was not operable. It had multiple issues, so I pulled the top to have a look at what was going on inside. What I'm showing here is the reverse unit, also known as the E unit. I'm popping it apart with a needle nose pliers. What's wrong with this reverse unit is that the fingers and the wiring to the fingers are pretty bad. So I'm gonna put in new E-unit fingers with new wiring. And the new wire is color-coded. The original Lionel locomotive E-unit did not have color-coded wires. One of the problems with this locomotive when I got inside of it was that somebody had clipped a good many of the wires without marking which wire went where. So I pretty much had to figure this out from scratch. Fortunately, I was able to pull the top off of one of my other GG1s to have a look at how it was wired. Now the E-unit is an electromagnetic device with a plunger. When energized, the plunger is pulled up and the little hook on the plunger engages the little prongs on the drum. When you have a drum, inspect it to make sure that none of the little prongs or teeth are damaged and make sure the little nubs on which it rotates are there. Also make sure the surface areas where the contact points are, are clean. These are E-unit fingers that I'm looking at. Now the modern color coding on the E-unit fingers the green wire goes to a motor coil. The blue wire goes to a motor brush. The short black wire goes to the E-unit hotspot. The yellow wire goes to the other motor brush. It's a bit of a wrestling match to get all these parts back in the E-unit because there's about five points on each side that have to engage correctly. And what usually happens is the drum itself wobbles as you're trying to do it. So you just have to slowly work your way through it. It takes a bit of luck and a bit of fiddly finger skill to get one of these things back together. I'm trying to position the drum with the needle nose pliers here. And I'm trying to put enough pressure on the sides to hold what I've done so far in position. The little metal bar that crosses the E-unit is the snap bar. That's what I call it anyway. It's what holds it all together. Now, in this particular E-unit, it wouldn't do that. It would easily pop apart. One solution would be to ping the little bar a little bit on the end. But what I did is I just used a little super glue to hold it in place making sure the super glue would not interfere with the rotating drum. This particular reverse unit rebuild went pretty well, surprisingly. I've had as much as an hour trying to fiddle these things back together, but this one went pretty quick. I still need to get the top fingers. The top fingers are just two fingers. I call it the top. It actually is the, when the, the units in the locomotive, it'll be on the bottom, and the four-fingered unit will be on the top. But the two-fingered unit is the one with the skid plate on it. If you decide to rebuild a reverse unit, you probably are better off starting with new parts, a new drum, a new set of fingers, and a lot of patience. With this particular reverse unit, since the wires had all been cut, I wasn't able to use one of my techniques. Normally, when I pop the E-unit, I leave the old wires in place, still attached to the old fingers. That way I know just where to solder the wires from the new fingers. But with the color coding, as I've indicated, you shouldn't have that problem. I'm about to pop the two-fingered unit in place now. 
I use these small channel locks and click it together. It looks like it's all lining up. You want to make sure at this point that the drum rotates freely and that the plunger goes up and down. And always make sure that you have the drum positioned so that the teeth engage with the plunger. I've been known to put them in the other way and then you got to take it all apart and start over and that's no fun. I'm just testing to see if things are working. So far it looks okay. A little adjustment perhaps. Now it's getting there. If you have a E unit to rebuild, I suggest you go ahead and try to do it. If you fail, you can always buy a already rebuilt one off of eBay or send it off to somebody to do it for you. So what do you have to lose? You can gain the experience at least by trying. I'm still fiddling with it, trying to make sure everything is in order. There's a point, there's a point, there's a point, there's a point, plus the lock pin. All those points have to line up. Here's the yellow wire goes to the motor brush. Now this is the blue wire that goes to the other motor brush. The green wire goes to the motor field coil and that's what energizes the field. This is the yellow wire that goes to the brush. That's the green wire that goes to the other brush. The blue wire goes to the motor field coil, which is in the center. See the blue wire? Now these other wires that are hanging down are for the headlight. I made the headlight wire extra long, longer than it needed to be, but I wanted the work room for when I take this thing apart again. Hopefully I won't have to do that anytime soon.
Well, it's all back together except for the pantographs and the pantograph insulators. The little white things are the insulators. It all clips on. Unfortunately, I only had enough insulators for one pantograph. I had the other set on order. Actually, I had to glue these insulators in place because unlike the old ones, they were too soft and the rubber wouldn't hold. Well, here's the locomotive all ready to run, pulling a very long freight, which it does with ease. The first car is a Mike's Train House automobile car. The second one is a Mike's Train House Speedway to Sunshine trailer car. Then we have the aquarium cars and lots of other cars. Here come the high cubes. A pickle car. And a Santa Fe caboose. This is a little Joe. My son at first thought it was another GG1. This too was made by Lionel. The little Joe in the real world has six wheel trucks. In the Lionel world, the power trucks were just four wheels. These locomotives were made by GE for export to the Soviet Union. However, the American government stepped in and prohibited the export, so these locomotives were distributed to various railroads, particularly the Milwaukee Road. Now, on the lower level of this train layout, we can run four trains. Two are operated from a control panel on the inside of the layout, the cameraman has got that duty, my son. The other two are being operated on the outside. I can run as many as seven trains at a time on this layout, but whenever I do, I lose my focus, something comes uncoupled, and I have a train wreck. We are running three GG1s plus the Little Joe. The problem with these Lionel MPC freight car couplers is that they often pop open unexpectedly. The solution is to wire them shut or put rubber bands on them to keep them shut or glue them shut. Now, the 2360 stalled there because of dirty track and a power drop. I finally took it apart and lubricated it and now it's running fine, plus I cleaned the track. The 2360 is pulling the Broadway Limited with some with some Norfolk and Western Powhatan Aero freight cars mixed in. Here comes the original 2332 GG1, not the one we just rebuilt. There's the little Joe, and the rebuilt GG1 is going the same direction as the little Joe. Here comes the coupler failure, followed by the train wreck, which you'll hear in a minute. A good line of touch. Ah, you're not paying attention. You didn't fall. It didn't keep coupling. Well, train wrecks happen. No permanent damage. It always seems to happen, though, when I try to run several trains at once. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching.